Hello. Today we're in the first activity of the parameters chapter of Learn to Code 2. And in this activity, hopefully you looked at the introduction for parameters, and uh, we're going to write some functions that take parameters uh, to help us out inside, inside those functions. So our goal here is to write a function to move forward a certain number of times. Now, uh, before we get to this, what does it mean to be a uh, parameter inside a function? <clears throat> so functions we've written so far, uh, or that have been given to us, um, functions like uh, move forward and turn left, um, those kinds of functions, when we call them, uh, there's an empty set of parentheses at the end. That means there are no parameters in those functions. They go ahead and they do some work for us. They move us forward, uh, they turn us left, things like that. It could be that there are some cases where you would like to give some additional information to the function to help it do its work. For example, you can see there might be a function called draw square, for example. Uh, draw square will is useful. It can draw a square in the middle of your screen with a certain width, maybe a width of one, for example. Um, but a more useful function might be draw square with a parameter width so that you can give it any kind of a width you want and we would draw a square of that width. That makes that function a lot more useful. You can write, uh, you can draw any size square that you'd want with a function like that instead of always being a width of one. In the case of draw square with no parameters, draw square with a single parameter width will let you draw a square with any size width. Um, what if we had a function called add player? We were making a game or something. Add player um, would add a new player to the game, but we wouldn't know anything about that player. So we might have to ask the player then, say, what's your name or what would you like us to call you? Uh, so maybe a more useful function might be something like this, add player, and then in the parentheses you could give it uh, a name, so like Alexis. So add player Alexis would then add the player whose name is Alexis directly into the game. Okay. Um, how about an example called plant seed? Plant seed would plant a seed at a certain location, for example, uh, but a more useful uh, function might be something like a function called plant with two parameters in it. The first one would be the number of seeds, say 27 seeds, and then a second parameter might be the type of seed that you're planting, say sunflower. So this function would read plant 27 seeds of type sunflower. Okay, Much more useful and uh, we could plant uh, seeds of any type, sunflowers, daisies, marigolds, for example, and any number of seeds from uh, zero to infinity. <laughs> so in this activity, our goal is to write a function that moves forward a certain number of times. We have a function already called move forward that takes us forward one tile, but move forward some certain number of times will move us forward a given number of tiles. And that number of tiles that we want to move forward, we're going to have to give that to the function, uh, and it will be given to that function in uh, as a parameter. Okay, So uh, let's take a look at this puzzle here. And uh, in this puzzle, we're going to get dropped off right here at the arrow. And we need to walk a long distance along this uh, wall here before we turn to the right, head down the stairs, and then walk a long distance back to this set of squares, because the only way we can get to the gem over here is if we raise these two platforms. And the only way we can raise those platforms is if we get our expert to come over to the lock and turn the lock up. All right? So let's work on getting our expert over to uh, the lock so that we can turn the lock up. And of course, the first thing we need to do is create a, an expert. So uh, we create an expert by creating an instance of type expert. So we say expert like this and generate our uh, expert instance. And now it's going to give us a function here, the outline of a function called move. And move has a parameter called distance, and its type is an integer. 
and that's good because we want this value, whatever value we say passed in to distance, or that's what we that's the terminology we use is we're going to pass a value in to the function move, and that value will be something like one, two, three, four, or whatever, depending on how many squares you want to move forward. Okay. Okay, so let's say we pass in, say, the uh, our distance is 5, for example. If we call move, if we do something like this, if we say move, we say move, and the distance is 5, that's going to say we want to move five, uh, 5 tiles forward. Okay, so uh, maybe a good way to do that in here is with a for loop. We could do something like this. We could say 4 i in one two five but we don't want to say five here right because we could for our distance we could pass in a six or a seven or an eight or any number right so we don't always want to move five forward what we really want to move is this value distance because distance is a variable it's a special variable called a parameter that's going to get assigned to this value right here so when we call move with the distance 5, distance inside this function will be assigned the value 5. When we call move with the distance, say, 9, then inside this function, the parameter variable distance will have the value 9. Okay? So our for loop then is not going to always go from 1 to 5. It's going to go from 1 up to whatever value is passed into uh, the parameter distance. Okay, see how that works? So when this value is 9, distance will be 9, and our for loop will go from 1 to 9. If we sent in a value of 2 for distance, then the parameter distance will have the value 2, and this for loop will only go from 1 to 2. Okay, and what would we want to do in that for loop? Well, uh, very simply, we want to uh, have our expert move forward two times, or distance times in this case. Okay, uh, let's try this out a couple times. Let's practice. Let's just uh, have move and pass in distance and see if our expert gets created and he moves just two. So I'll go ahead and run the code here. We should create an instance of expert and he moves one and two, and then he stops. Okay, great. So uh, let's try to get him up to this square right here now. So that should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Move forward 6. So let's do that. Run the code and see if he moves forward 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And stops. Good. After that, we're going to want to have our expert turn to the right. Our expert turn to the right. Okay, and then he's going to move forward one, two down the stairs. Move a distance of two. And then he will turn right again. Expert turn right. Then he will move one, two, three, four, five, six again to get over to the uh, uh, the base of those stairs over there. Move forward six. Okay. And wait, is that right? I think that might be too many. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. We only want him to move over five. Okay, then he'll turn to the left, expert uh, turn to the left, and he'll move forward one, two, three, four, five. Move five. Okay, and that should put him right in front of the uh, right in front of the lock. So if we turn to the left, we can face the lock. And we can say expert dot turn lock up. And let's see if that will cause these platforms to come up. Before we write any more code, this is a good thing to try here. And I'm going to run this a little bit faster. 
There's a lot of ground to cover here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Turn to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Turn to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Turn to the left and turn lock up. Great. That got our platform to come up. Okay. So now at this point, we just want to turn to the left. Expert dot turn left. And let's again move forward one, two, three, so that we get near this platform here. So move for the distance three. And turn to the right. Move forward three more. and turn to the right. Now he's facing this these row of gems here and we need to move one, two, three. Uh, let's see, wait, one, two, three to get to the gem. Uh, expert turn to the right and move three. Or does it move four? Let's look at this carefully here. It might be a move four. Let's look. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's four. Uh, it was hiding over there. So move to the four. And once we get there, we want to just go ahead and collect the gem. So this is a lot of code here. This may not work, but let's uh, give it a try. Expert dot collect gem. Okay, and if this does work, uh, hang on for a little bit because we want to try one other thing. Uh, let's see if we can write a function to make him spin some number of times just for some fun here. Okay, let's run the code. Run it a little faster. There he goes. Moving forward six, turn to the right, move two, turn to the right, move five, turn to the left, move five, turn left, turn lock up. And turn left, move three, one, two, three, turn right, move three, and come right under the gem and he collects it. And good, he did it. Okay. So uh, what we did here to help us out. Now, uh, how how uh, how difficult would this have been without this special move function that we have that takes a parameter, the number of tiles we want to move forward? It would be very difficult, right? We'd have to tr tr you know we'd have to write a move command for every one of these tiles that would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 or 7 20 about 28 move forwards in here so we saved a lot of uh, we saved a lot of effort and a lot of code by creating this function this move function that takes some distance we want to move forward Instead of having to write six move forwards here, we can just write one line of code, move some distance six. Okay? All right, let's play around with one other thing here. Before we collect the gem, before we collect our gem, I would like to have our experts celebrate a little bit. Okay? So let's say expert.spin. Now let's just do this. Let's say spin spin um, uh, how many times let's say uh, let's make a parameter called num times spin num times and we'll have him spin three times before he collects the gem okay so we don't have a function called spin uh, that that takes some um, uh, some value num times here so I will go ahead and add that up here at the top and say funk spin spin uh, takes a single parameter num times and its type we have to put its type here is an int okay so there's our function spin our red dot will go away because we now have to find a function spin that takes a single parameter that's an integer called number of times and what we'd like to do here is have uh, the expert spin around some number of times and the number of times we want him to spin is num times okay so let's do this uh, like we did in the uh, move function 
let's say for i in one, two, num times, we want to spin. And what does a spin look like? Well, it's just uh, four uh, turn lefts. Okay, so we'll say expert dot turn. You can turn right or turn left, but you can't mix them. <laughs> expert dot turn left and expert dot turn left. And one more will get him to spin all the way around. Turn left. Okay, so see what we did here? These four expert dot turn lefts create one spin all the way around, 360 degrees all the way around. Inside a for loop, this for loop is going to have him spin all the way around some number of times. Okay, so if we pass in the value three for our number of times, he's going to do a uh, expert turn left, expert turn left, expert turn left, expert turn left three times. Okay. All right, let's run this and see if it works. We'll run it faster again. So this time, when right before he collects the gem, he should spin around three times. Raising the platform. Good. Here he comes to the gem. There he starts his spin. There's one, two, and three spins and then collect the gem. All right, good. Okay, if you have any questions about this, uh, go ahead and post it to the uh, comments section below. Uh, and in the meantime, just to review what we did here is we created a function that takes, uh, we created two functions. Each of them take a single parameter, spin takes an integer, number of times, it tells how many times you want the expert to spin. And move here takes an integer called distance, which tells how many tiles we want the expert to move forward. Okay, that's called a parameter, which is the variable that's inside these parentheses uh, for the function. Uh, now, when we run this function, it's a little bit different here. When we run the function, here's our move function. We say that this value that gets passed in here is an argument. It's an argument here. So let's go ahead up here and we'll tap on this definition argument. It's an input value passed into a function to customize its behavior. Okay, so when we wrote our spin uh, with a parameter, a single parameter that's an integer, it takes some number of times. What we did is we passed in an argument to spin here, the value 3, the integer 3, which told how many times we wanted uh, the expert to spin. Okay. So a little new terminology here. Parameter is the name of the variable that's being used inside your function. Okay? And argument is the value that you pass in to that, uh, to that function. Now remember what happens is this 3, the argument, the value 3, when the, when the code jumps up to inside your function here, that num times, the value 3, is getting assigned to the parameter num times inside your function. Okay? Okay, don't worry if this doesn't make total sense right now. We're going to play around with this a lot in the next four or five activities, so you'll get really good at using parameters in functions. So, all right. Good work, everybody. We'll see you next time.